Good morning, everyone. It's me, Richard, from Heart Attack Man. It's no secret that if you're subscribed to this channel or follow me on any of my social media, then I'm a massive Heart Attack Man fan. They are by far one of my favorite bands of all time. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, Follow me up back. It'll only take a second, I promise. Heart Attack Man is a punk rock band from my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio that has a history of dabbling in Eurodance and hard techno stripper anthem music, but nowadays they pretty much just make butt rock. Needless to say, they have a very diverse catalog. Definitely one of the pillars of the Ohio community, sitting firmly next to Kid Cudi and Scott the Waz. I've wanted to make a video about them for so long, but trying to document every single one of Eric Egan's movements is something even the CIA hasn't been able to do, so making a video about the history of the band was just out the window. So I thought that ranking every single one of Hard Tech Man's projects would be a good way to pay tribute to the band, as well as serve as content. Even though it's a pretty impossible task in and of itself, considering that Melonhead gave every Hard Tech Man project a perfect 10, and if Fantano says it's his opinion, then it's also my opinion by default. Hey, I don't make the rules. But let's be honest, there are some projects I listen to more than others. In all seriousness, if you haven't listened to Heart Attack Man yet, I highly encourage you to do so. They have one of the most welcoming communities in the whole Midwest emo scene. Hell, I played cornhole with both guitarists in the band, but that's a story I'll touch up upon later. With that out of the way, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Eric from Heart Attack Man. Were you really just about to scroll past me without saying good morning back? What the fuck is wrong with you? Starting off with the non-album singles, we have Old Enough to Die, Boring, and No Tap Apology. I put these in their own separate category because a single song can't compare to an entire EP or album. Starting off, we have Old Enough to Die. This song has always confused me because it was released as a single leading up to their EP Thoughts and Prayers but wasn't included on the EP for some reason. Regardless, it's still a pretty tight song. The whole song has this whole slow, head bobby grunge to it. Eric has also canonically stated that the tempo is based off his average walking speed, so we can add that to the wiki now. The lyrics of the song are about a father who has gone mad and decides to take out his family with a gun. While the lyrics are pretty morbid, it's supposed to have a pumped up kick sort of message. Overall, it's a pretty tight track. Next up, we have their single, Boring. This is by far the shortest song in the Heart Attack Man discography, clocking in at only 57 seconds. The lyrics of the song are by far some of my personal favorite from the band. While short, they basically describe someone with a boring and bland personality. You know, the kind of people that act like, My life basically sucks. What's the point of getting out of bed in the morning if I'm just going to be a disappointment? Ha 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 ha. I'm so fucking ugly. LMAO my ass off. SMH my fucking head. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Relatable. Trust me, we've all known someone like that. Could it be me? Could it be me? This one is also really fun to see live because not only is everyone trying to form a mosh pit within the span of 57 seconds, but also get in it and mosh at the same time. The perfect kind of shit show. The last of the non-album singles is No Tap Apology, and while this is just another Eric Egan shit post, it's actually a really catchy and well thought out track lyrically, which is something the band is able to do consistently and really well. The song lyrically takes a jab at the various No Tap Apologies that public figures tend to release whenever they're caught up in allegations to either dismiss everything or prove that they learned from their mistakes and have changed. While this is pretty universal across Twitter, it's most prevalent in the DIY music scene the most. My favorite part of the song is the second half where the narrator states that he's found God now and everyone thinks it's a cop-out. This man's really taken Kanye's mental health regimen. I really wish they played this one live more, by far one of my favorite tracks in the band. I'm a jock and I listen to country music. Starting off the EP and album portion of this list, we have the elusive Heart Attack Man EP. And by elusive, I mean it's the only project by the band to not be featured on their Spotify. Could have sworn it was on there at one point, but who knows. This is by far the shortest project by the band, clocking in at only 7 minutes and 35 seconds across 6 tracks. This EP is essentially a demo by the band. This is the only project by the band that I feel that if you haven't heard it before, you're not really missing out on anything. Everything is rough and mixed poorly. I really shouldn't be hearing the drummer over the vocalist. Speaking of vocals, Eric sounds like he's doing an imitation of a Midwest emo singer rather than singing how he wants to. For the record, has that classic garage band ending where all the instruments stop and echo out at the very end, which just kills me every time. Also, each of the songs are really short and end before they even get started. I know I'm being harsh for this being the first project the band has ever put out, but if this was the first thing I heard from them, I'm not sure if I would have kept tabs on them. It's a shame that they only have this on their band camp. Not even YouTube has a rip of it. While it's not my personal favorite, I wouldn't say it's trash or the worst thing I've ever heard. It's a cute piece of history from the band, and I can appreciate it because things would only go up from here. Bold of you to assume I give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about you. In the grand scheme of everything the band would release in the future, the Acid Rain EP is criminally underrated. Undoubtedly, it's an absolute banger of a hidden gem from the band that needs more love. 
People always say, when I die, I want to wake up at the Juice World concert. Well, when I die, I want to wake up at the Push Me Away mosh pit. I can only imagine how insane that used to be live. Also, when I die, Photoshop me next to some bitches. None of that Heaven's Gate type shit. This EP would introduce us to the type of sound we would come to expect from the band. It definitely has a Manson Family type sound to it, just a lot rougher. Eric is still kind of buried amongst all the noise of everything else, but it's still an improvement from the demo EP. As far as the actual words Eric is singing, it's by far an improvement from the demo EP. And by that I mean we went from three sentences to three paragraphs. Eric's writing style would also greatly improve on Acid Rain. The demo EP featured a lot of songs about love and broken hearts, which is very uncharacteristic of Heart Attack Man. Heart Attack Man is all about kicking babies and cutting off toxic relationships. Luckily, we see that shift in his writing on the EP. Any allusions to love is written vaguely to mean a relationship with a person rather than a romantic relationship with a person, which is what I like to hear when I listen to Heart Attack Man. Not saying they can't write a song about love in the future, it's just refreshing when I listen to their music intently because most other bands in the Midwest emo scene are are kind of doing the same thing lyrically. Overall, Acid Rain is underrated. It still has its flaws and it isn't my favorite Heart Attack Man project, but it shouldn't be written off either. There is value in this EP, and if you're a fan of the band and haven't heard it yet, you are definitely missing out. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Eric, from Heart Attack Man. So today I was informed that we received a cease and desist letter from Waffle House. It was three pages, but I'll just kind of keep it brief. Next up on my tier list, we have their debut album, The Manson Family. The Manson Family was my introduction to the band, and because of that, it has a special place in my heart. It single-handedly introduced me to a whole subculture of music that I didn't even know was happening in my area. It also introduced me to a beanie obsession, but that's neither here nor there. This album is low on my list because the first half of the record really doesn't do it for me. Not saying they're bad songs or anything, but compared to the last half of the record and the rest of the band's discography, they're definitely outclassed. The last half of the record has legendary songs like Surrounded by Morons, Taking Sides, Cut Off at the Knees, Cool Kids Table, and my personal favorite Heart Attack Man song of all time, Blood Orange Sun. Songs like Blood Orange Sun and Taking Sides are designed to have arms broken to, while Funhouse Mirrors in comparison is the song you go grab a drink to. While I love this album a lot, the first first half kind of melds together for me. Not saying that each song is exactly the same, it just doesn't have the same amount of energy as the latter half does. I honestly wouldn't recommend this as a starting point to a newcomer of the band in my opinion. What's up everyone, it's me Eric from Heart Attack Man, coming at you live in my new Hootie and the Blowfish t-shirt. Moving on to the A tier, we have their latest release, the Thoughts and Prayers EP. Admittedly, when this first came out, I wasn't too crazy about it. I was still used to hearing the raw pop punk sound from their previous records that hearing this new polished metal sound was a little disorienting at first. It has grown on me a lot since then, and looking back, it only seems like a natural progression for the band. The best example of this new sound I'm talking about is on Cool To Me, which has this really deep Pantera-style riff. While the riff is truly menacing to the average sitting-on-the-fringe enjoyer, it's quickly followed up by Damn Son, Where'd You Find This? to reassure them that no matter what it sounds like, Eric is still up to his nefarious antics. The songs Pitch Black and Leap Year off this EP are already certified classics from the band, two of their best songs by far. Seeing the song Thoughts and Prayers Performed Live was one of the highlights of the show for me. Eric had everyone get down on the ground and as soon as the beat dropped everyone jumped and was moshing. Speaking of which, this is the tour I finally saw them live at. The Thoughts and Prayers tour was the first headlining tour for the band, which is a major milestone for any band and something to be really proud of for sure unless they have the misfortune of playing at the Peppermint Club. Me and the homies hate the Peppermint Club. Everyone has that one band that they treat like it's their own. You follow them when they're starting off in clubs and stuff, and when they get more and more successful, you can't help but feel proud. This band gives me a sense of pride that I didn't know someone from Cleveland could have. LeBron left again, we really don't have much going for us. I don't think I felt that greater than when I saw them on this tour. The Cleveland show was the last on their tour, and it was treated like a homecoming show. And to this date, I think it's the only concert I've been to that has completely sold out. Before the tour started, Eric made claims that he was the Cornhole Champion. And what just seemed like another day on the official verified Heart Attack Man Twitter account turned into one of the coolest and most down-to-earth ways I've seen a band connect with their fans. The band had two thoughts and prayers themed Cornhole boards made, and before almost every show, the band battled their fans at Cornhole. When I said Heart Attack Man had one of the most welcoming fan bases in all of the Midwest emo scene, I truly mean it. That and their fan base has an obsession with beanies and knives, but that's neither here nor there. At the Cleveland show, my best friend who introduced me to the band and I were able to play the first game of Cornhole of the Day with Ty and Logan, both guitarists of the band. We lost, but I was assured afterwards that it was the only game of Cornhole on the whole tour to go into triple overtime, which felt nice. The Cleveland show was also sponsored by Condados for the Cornhole event, which is the most Cleveland thing I've ever heard of. There was also a Mosh Pit Champion ribbon that was handed out after each show, but that has to be a myth because I still haven't received mine. As for the actual concert, 
concert itself, the band was amazing. They played a good mix of new and old stuff. I even got to hear Blood Orange Sun, which made my night. I also don't think I've seen more people crowd surf in my entire life. I counted one person in particular that crowd surfed 32 times. That's just during the hammy set alone. At one point during Crisis Actor, there was like 10 people on stage that stole the mic from Eric and read me my Miranda rights. At the end of the night, they played Pitch Black and Leap Year, and I don't think I've been in a more fun mosh pit in my entire life. I also forgot to mention that the band started the set with Puke. While the crowd was split down the middle by the band beforehand, it gave Eric enough room to ride in on a tricycle, do some tricks, get on stage, execute the wall of death within the crowd, all before the first song even started. Typical Heart Attack Man activities. There's more stories, but I'll save that for another occasion. By the way, I'm supposed to be ranking the rest of their projects and not rambling about my concert experience. I apologize, I get carried away when it gets to concerts. Overall, this EP is extremely solid, and I would rank it higher, but the S category is the 10 out of 10 category for a reason. <laughs> You know how I said earlier that I ranked the single separately because an entire album can't compare to a single song? Yeah, I lied. Next up, we have the Split EP. This is an EP that was originally a split between Heart Attack Man and McCafferty. This was originally an idea from the label, as far as I know. But after McCafferty was, well, to McCafferty, Heart Attack Man removed them from the Split EP, and now we just have a set of two songs. So technically it's a single now, but it's, it's my list, and I make the rules. Those two songs, however, are some of the band's best material in their entire discography. It's a shame that this is the fate that they ended up having, and they're not played live that much anymore as far as I know. Those two songs are 99% and 100mg Millennial. 100mg kind of has an acid rain feel to it. It has this really chill, head bobby grunge groove that I was talking about earlier, and when it picks up during the chorus, it gets me pumped every time. The lyrics are by far some of my favorite from Eric. They depict this millennial anxiety that I'm pretty sure we can all relate to. 99% on the other hand is the perfect mosh pit song. The song is lyrically similar to 100mg in that they both share themes of feeling worthless. The chorus is extremely catchy and the whole song is just a blast throughout. The songs are definitely god tier from the band and absolutely deserve more love. Moving on, we have the Audio Tree Live album. To me, live albums are just as important as studio albums, and it's something I wish artists of any genre would release more of. I feel like that's a trend that kind of died off in the streaming era. For those who don't know, Audio Tree is like the NPR Tiny Desk, but for indie bands. The band will perform a set live in a studio while the host interjects and interviews them in between songs. In a way, it's kind of a rite of passage for indie bands. Once you have an audio tree live on your Spotify, you're kind of a big deal. Heart Tech Band's performance was amazing and on brand for sure. From the reload gun riff in the middle of Cut My Losses, to Eric telling the non-existent audience to sing along, and to quote, Shut this shit up, audio tree. The best way I can describe it is basically what the top comment says. The hardcore shouts, reppin' of own merch, miss chords of a big grin, how could someone not love this band? The performance was not only charming, but it was also a great example of the band at their best. The interviews in between also do a good job at showing that while the band has fun with all the shit posting, they put a lot of heart into what they do. The only downside is that the album features only songs from Fake Blood, which isn't a bad thing, but I understand the argument for variety. Luckily this plays into the last thing I've yet to rank on my list, Fake Blood. Good morning, everyone. It's me, Eric, from Heart Attack, man. Is my proclamation of who I am to the world on a daily basis. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? I think the world would be a much better place if everyone actually knew who the fuck they were. Fake Blood is to date my favorite project from the band. Sure, my reasons are a little biased, and sure, my ranking on any of these projects may change throughout time, but this is how it stands at the moment. While the Manson Family was the first thing I heard from the band, I started listening to them just before Fake Blood was announced. And this was before they were popular through TikTok and all their antics existed only on Twitter. It was fun following the band to the recording process of the album and all the antics that ensued from it, like the whole Moms Against Heart Attack Man movement. I'm still kicking myself for not breaking the bank on one of those vandalized copies of the Fake Blood vinyl. Fake Blood improves on everything the Manson family laid down in spades. The songs are catchier, the grooves are thicker, the mosh pit potential is doubled, and the songwriting is the most cutthroat it's ever been. This is more infamously the case with Cut My Losses. The song actually drew some controversy to the band due to how explicit the lyrics are. The song is about people who threaten suicide as a manipulation tactic. This is a topic that isn't really touched up upon, especially in music, and I'm glad the band brought it to light. Much of their fanbase unanimously agrees, as it's one of their most celebrated songs, especially live. Some of my other favorites are Out For Blood, which is inspired by Michael Douglas's character in the movie Falling Down, 
one. Sugar Coated is a pretty fun track that starts off with the infamous Hey What's Up I Hate Your Guts. The whole track is about how you want to kick someone's teeth in, which is just classic Heart Attack Man content. Crisis Actor is probably my favorite track off the record. Musically, it's just chaos, and Eric Redu or Miranda writes in the most polite way possible. What more could you want? I put Fake Blood in the top spot as my favorite Heart Attack Man project because it's their most versatile record and I have so many good memories surrounding it. The album came out during the tail end of my senior year in high school and I was playing it on loop throughout that entire summer. It also came out months after I had just discovered the band and that exciting feeling is something you can't describe. I think the fact that I'm still listening to this album as much as much as the rest of their catalog goes to show you just how timeless their music really is. And that's my personal ranking of every Heart Attack Man project. Let me know how you would rank their projects in the comments down below. Heart Attack Man is one of my favorite bands of all time and I wanted to make a video on them for so long. If this is your first exposure to Heart Attack Man and this video inspired you to join the fanbase, run they only live, eat baby carrots, and drink black coffee. While this video proves that there are some projects I listen to more than others, this is one of the few bands that has a pretty solid discography all throughout. I love all of their work and I'm excited to see what the future brings them. If you're looking for a place to start, I obviously recommend Fake Blood or Thoughts and Prayers and Working Your Way Backwards. The Split EP is also a good place to start if you want a little sample and test the waters. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. What's up everyone, it's me Eric from Heart Attack Man, you're watching Disney Channel.